Hi guys, my name is Rodney Banta, otherwise known as Rodnator, and this is the Druid. So the Druid is going to be one of the more complicated classes that you're going to play, but in essence it's still just a cleric in, in reality. So the Druid, I'm going to go into it very quickly. A couple of the main things about it, comparative to a uh, cleric, Druids cannot wear metal armor. They can't. They is outlawed. But they can still wield magic or metal weapons. They get a thing called an animal companion, which is just a big, usually a wolf or something like that, that they can have on their side that will just kill you. It's just an, an extra powerful version of its species. Better than a paladin's mount in every way. Uh, they also get a uh, divine spellcasting ability like a cleric, so the armor that they're wearing doesn't matter. For instance, if you have arms and equipment, there's a lot of special materials. A very common plate mail that they can wear is dragon hide plate mail straight out of the DMG because it's dragon hide and not metal. Um, anything like that you can do. Of course... Dragonhide can always be used to make a masterwork version of any armor, it specifically says so. So if you make a masterwork set of, say, breastplate out of Dragonhide, it's still not made of metal, so you can still just wear breastplate. But good luck getting Dragonhide when you're weak enough that you don't even have breastplate yet. But I really recommend, like, wood armor, there's cord armor, you can make bone armor, anything like that, you know, like, get creative, you know, say, hey, I, I leather, you can still wear leather, hide, you can still wear hide. You just can't wear breastplate, you can't wear chain mail, you can't wear plate mail, or, or anything along those lines. Now, you get a couple of uh, very important abilities at the beginning. You get Animal Companion, which I'm going to break down right now. Animal Companions, a Druid's Animal Companion is different from normal animals of a kind, same as Paladin's Bound or anything. At first and second, it has no bonus hit dice, bonus natural armor, bonus strength, but it does get a bonus trick. So say you have Defend, now nobody has to do a watch. You can just have your wolf... Literally stay up all night and do watch because it's defending. And if anybody walks over the camp, it'll bark. You also get a special link and share spells. So, for instance, the special link. A druid can handle their animal companion as a free action or push it as a move action. Even if they don't have any ranks and handle animal. They gain a plus four circumstance on wild empathy with their animal. So if you want to teach it tricks and stuff, you're better at it than anybody else. Because it's your animal companion. There's a bit of your soul and power in that creature. You are bonded. So... As your animal companion goes up, it eventually gets evasion, devotion, multi-attack, great, and improved evasion, as well as a bunch of bonus hit dice, bonus natural armor, bonus strength, and bonus tricks. So bonus hit dice are very important, because every time you get a bonus hit dice, it's usually going to be a D8 for an animal. That is going to upgrade its hit points, base attack bonus, and everything as its monster progression. So at level 20th, it's 12 better than a normal one of its kind. You've got a level, potentially, if it's a wolf, 16 sitting right next to you, and it's a wolf. Like, so it's got really good stats. It gets a bonus to its natural armor of 12, so it's basically a plate mail wearing tower shield wielding fighter. It's got an AC 22 before any natural. It gets a bonus strength of plus 6, so it might as well be a raging barbarian all the time, except better. And then it gets 7 bonus tricks, so it can do basically everything under the sun. Now, jumping back away from that, you can, as you level up, you can upgrade your animal companion. At 4th level, you can take things like an ape, which can wield weapons. So, say, give your ape martial weapon proficiency, give it a great sword. Now it's a large class fighter, and it's better than the fighter. Except it's not a fighter. Uh, you can get a brown bear or a crocodile, a dire ape at, at 7th. Say at 10th level, you can get a polar bear, a dire lion, or a mega raptor. 13th level, you can get a dire bear, an elephant, or an octopus. 16th level, dire shark, triceratops, dire tiger, T-Rex, uh, or a giant squid. So, of course, the whole deal is that you are the nature person. Uh, now we're going to jump a little bit further in there. You get wild empathy. Wild empathy is just diplomacy for animals. It's exactly what it is. You use the diplomacy skill, but it works on animals. You use gestures and, and basic communication in that way. At level two, you get woodland stride. Woodland stride allows you to, if I recall, walk through nature without leaving. Um, yeah, at second level, druid may move through any sort of undergrowth, such as natural thorns, briars, or areas or similar terrain at their normal speed without taking damage. Or, or having any penalties. So rough terrain from vines or anything in the way, you're just so used to the nature world, you can just go right through it. Trackless step, you don't leave tracks. Pretty straightforward. Uh, resist nature's lure. Let me see what that is, because I don't quite remember. Starting at fourth level, Druid gains a plus four on uh, saving throws uh, against the spell-like abilities of Fae, such as Dryads, Pixies, and stuff. So yeah, you know, the Dryad wants to seduce you or whatever, you're a Druid, you're like, dude, you are not the first Dryad to try. And I'm a little bit hard to get. Like, that's the idea. You, you've seen it before. You are used to this whole nature's allure thing. So, yeah, you don't care. Next, you get Wild Shape. This is the biggest and most powerful thing of the entire class. Wild Shape allows you to transform into an animal for a certain number of time, or a certain number of rounds per day. And a, and a certain amount of times per day. And that will upgrade pretty often. But Wild Shape... At 5th level, a druid gains the ability to turn herself into a small or medium animal and back again once per day. Her options for new forms include all creatures with the animal type in the monster manual. This ability functions like polymorph, except as noted here. The effect lasts for one hour per druid level or until they change back. Changing form to animal or back is a standard action that does not provoke AOWs. 
So you thought werewolves were cool? You're literally immediately, you could just be a werewolf or whatever. A uh, druid loses their ability to speak with, uh, while in animal form, but you could probably, you can still talk to animals or whatever. Uh, druid can use this ability more times per day at 6th, 7th, 14th, 18th, uh, according to table 3.8. 12th level, they can use wild shape to change into plants, such as shambling mounds, with the same size restriction. 16th, they can use wild shape to change into small, medium, or large elementals, which are really great. At 18th level, you can exhume an elemental form twice per day. At 20th level, you can do it three times per day. At 20th level, you can use this to change into a huge class elemental, which is going to be your best. So those are usually elders. Now, you also, at 9th level, get Venom Immunity, that you're immune to all poisons. At 13th level, a druid gains the ability to change their appearance at will as using the Alter Self spell. So you can literally just, you're so used to shape changing into animals, you can change into anybody that's the same species as you. You're literally like, oh yeah, I don't have to turn back into what I look like. I can turn into whatever I want to look like. Now on top of that, you get Timeless Body. After attaining 15th level, you are just like the monk. You no longer take age penalties for, for, for being old. Uh, X druids, you lose pretty much all of your abilities. I'm just going to be blunt with that. You can you can read that if you like or look it up. So druids are going to get spell casting ability, and they're going to get a new spell level every third level. So at first you start with first, at fourth you get third, or at third you get second, at fifth you get fifth, or third, <laughs> at fifth you get third, at seventh you get fourth, at ninth you get fifth, and on and on and on. Every every level thereafter, you're just getting a new spell. Other than that. You're not really getting very much out of your class. You get a good fort and a good will save, so you start at 202 with a bad reflex, and eventually you upgrade at the end to 6, uh, 12 6 12. So you have a full, a half, and a full as your fort reflex and will. That's really not too bad. You don't really need the reflex that bad unless you're getting fireballs shot at you, but you eventually are just hopefully taking your own stuff to, to impede, uh, you know, help that. But other than that, you don't really need to worry about it. Now, as for the druid, the main thing you're going to want to be paying attention to is your wild shape ability and your animal companion. Your animal companion is literally going to be a part of you. Like, you, uh, an animal companion should always be near you. You should always love it. It should be your best friend. You should be able to disclose things to it that you can never tell anyone else. That is a piece of your soul in that animal. So, um, you get the ability to spontaneous cast spells as a druid. And I very much messed this up in my other video. You can definitely cast summon spells. I had been making a cleric video that I never ended up releasing, and that was why in the last video I accidentally said, hey, you can spontaneously heal. But yes, you can spontaneously cast summon spells, summon monsters specifically, equivalent to your level, which is just pretty straightforward. It's pretty useful, and it's going to be a line, you know, whatever. So you might get a dire badger or something, you know, sim simple little summons, very useful. I always use, like, hawks or something that can just distract things or hit some, you know, enemies that are otherwise out of my reach. Now, as for your proficiencies, druids are proficient with the following weapons. Club, dagger, sh uh, dart, quarterstaff, sickle, scimitar, short spear, sling, and normal spear. So I usually take a spear with these guys and like a, a, a sling. Um, you're also proficient with all natural attacks, claw, bite, or whatever of any form you assume with wild shape. You're proficient with light and medium armor, but, pro but prohibited from wearing metal armor. Um... Uh, a good example, uh, or a good way to do this is to take wooden armor that has been altered with the ironwood spell to make it as good as metal armor. So it's still wood, it's just got ironwood on it. So hey, guess what? It's played now. Blah. Or as I said before, just get some dragon hide or something along those lines. By level 4, you could probably just afford to buy it if you don't want to hunt down a juvenile red dragon. So like, yeah, just just buy it, you know, get yourself. And of course, I have a book right back here. If I, I sh probably shouldn't just turn in my video and grab it, but... Uh, arms and equipment, I, I guess it's over there somewhere because it's not in this stack. Arms and equipment guide has a lot of alternative materials and a lot of different things you can use to, to have armors. And I really recommend picking up the arms and equipment guide. But aside from that, that pretty much seems to be all of... Yeah, you use wisdom to cast just like the cleric. It's pretty much the cleric. Let me throw that in there. But anyway, guys, I feel like that's about all I can talk to you guys about the druid. But anyway, if I messed anything up, made anything wrong, or just not included something you like, go ahead and tell me in the comments below. Like, comment, and subscribe. And that's how it works.